Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Blacklist Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, number 23 on the list, Jacqueline Grosky. And with me is... Number 13, Melissa Maxey. We are here to talk about Season 3, Episode 3, Eli Magic. And this is about genetically modified organisms and the local farmers that are trying to go against the corporation and and kind of how Red and Liz kind of get involved in the, in the middle of it. So what did you think about this, Melissa? I think this looks like an X-Files episode. <laughs> um, it's interesting. They started out with a corn meme with a bunch of guys going through it, and it was reminiscent of uh, um, the X-Files movie. And uh, this whole episode kind of is reminiscent of, of the X-Files movie with instead of there being a bee, we have something else. Right. Well, the instead of the bee, it's uh, these are GMOs and the uh, these local farmers are trying to go against Verdiant, who, as it happens to be the leader, the, the CEO of the company is in the cabal. And from the uh, from the list, we know that uh, you know, we find out that if uh, that they're laundering money for the cabal and that's that's the tie in. So Red and Liz are trying to get some in to get uh, kind of you know, maybe that control back because if they can if they can shut off the the money source for the cabal that's going to really hurt them. Unfortunately, somebody's gone in and they've stolen the uh, genetic codes for this seed and if they destroy this all the you know basically all the farms that rely on this nobody's going to be able to um, well, if the Verdiant succeeds, they will have the only seed that will work as far as corn. So they will have cornered the whole world market. It's not not a great thing. No, and then they have the people that stole it. Um, they're the ones that created the virus that they want to create for the to affect the global food. Like they want to make a crisis, right? So they want to. Right, because anything that this affects will be all the GMOs, and most of the corn is already a GMO. It's kind of like um, a conspiracy theorist's dream. (laughs) (laughs) And so, you know... Yeah, how to rule the world. (laughs) Well, they they go in, like these farmers go in thinking they're going to release the code and the company will lose billions. But there's this guy within that's lost his farm, but he's got a little different plan going on. So after they get everything downloaded, he kills his inside man, kills everybody in the room, and mm-hmm. then goes and takes it to this other, to, to his uh, scientist who's unlocking the code and comes up with this virus and all they have to do is let out these, I guess instead of bees, it was what, like fruit flies or something. Yeah, something like that. And then... Little you, tiny gnat thingies. Right. So, and Aram puts it in his <laughs> like computer generated little uh, thing and it's like the whole world is going to be devastated. <laughs> yeah, because like everyone's using the verdient seed. So any anything, any of the crops that are using that or any of the farmers using those crops are going to be wiped out. Right. So, how did you like the uh, the uh, the ship container that that Red had turned into like a really nice house? Well, we talked about this last time, and I really want one of those. <laughs> I'm like, is... I want to live in that. Yeah, they talk <laughs> about all these like little houses and all these things, uh-huh. and you figure how many millions of these little cargo things that are out there. I mean, you could just be like shipped from by truck to wherever you want to go. That would right. Be... Yeah, you just. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, really, seriously, you could you could call up a moving company and just move your own house and say, you know what, I want to spend a week in California. Yeah. And, you know, a truck comes out, and for a few hundred dollars, they just take you out to California. You don't, of course, have to have a place to, like, <laughs> park yourself, right? Whoa. There's got to be, like, water facilities and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's but, like, you know, what are the uh, campgrounds of America, all those little things are around the highway that it would kind of be the same thing as uh, as the mobile homes. Yeah, true. Yeah, it would just be like that. Like Red Reddington could have this whole like industry of movable houses. <laughs> instead like of, I said, I want one of those. <laughs> I, I, I'm particularly fond of the one he has. And you'd have to go through Red to get it, I think. 
He would control. That can be arranged. He would control <laughs> control the world market and and ship container homes. <laughs> we could make millions. <laughs> <laughs> millions of dollars. Uh huh. <laughs> all right. So at this point, this is all part of the plan to exonerate Liz. But you know, I think there's something like the the task force with Wrestler. There's like some kind of other thing going on here. They haven't really said anything yet. But it seems like okay, you know, is there some other is there some other motive? You what know? for wrestler? No, for Reddington. Like oh yeah, you know, I think he always has another motive. He's always like a he's always like ten steps ahead of everybody. You know, right? And you know, I mean, he's already trying to get rid of the cabal, which not only does it exonerate Liz, but it really helps him. Yeah, because what's going to happen when the cabal is gone? Right. Reddington's going to have more control. I mean, this. I mean, it's obviously going to be bigger than it is. Where is I mean, rest- it's not just saving. I mean, he's using Liz, like the whole thing with Liz, to like be able to get rid of the cabal and be able to be in a better position. Right. You know. So they're kind of. You know, I think wrestler just doesn't get it. I think he he wants to catch Liz, bring her in, and just don't think he gets the fact that the cabal's not going to let that happen. And. I mean, he can. No, bear- he's very much. He's so he's so caught up in just like looking straight ahead without with blinders on. He's not really seeing the bigger picture. I mean, he, you know, like the cabal infiltrated his own task force, and uh, the the I don't know what did what did they call him the not the commissioner the but the head of the cabal basically you know worked you know his way in through the state department. Into the task force itself. So Wrestler has right. little or no open, or really power. Yeah, no, Wrestler's in a bad position because I think he realizes that. He, I think he realizes what kind of position he's in. It's really, I don't know how he's going to work his way out of it, though. He doesn't seem to be trying to, you know, trying to do that. He He's kind of focused on just doing his job. And he's not really deviating from that too much. Right. You know, so... You know, Liz and Red, they're trying to get their leverage from the cabal. And, uh, at the same time, you know, they, they're, they're trying to, to, you know, get things going and they're waiting on Dembe. And, you know, where's Dembe? <laughs> That's yeah. when they find out. Well, Reddington, obviously, when he doesn't show up to his checkpoint, um, he starts calling around right. and trying to figure out what happened. And we've been seeing the fact that you know, yeah. he's, he's been uh, he's been held by uh, what's his name Simon. Yeah. And um, you know, so you know that's been going on. And okay, this is when Reddington calls Glenn. We like Glenn from last season because yeah. he's the guy at the DMV that gives Reddington so much trouble, and he's the one that. You know, he's the one that starts tracking down where Dembe has been. So he fl- he gets, you know, makes some progress trying to find Dembe by tracking the car. Dembe parked outside a restaurant where Ma- uh, it's a Matthias grabbed him. Uh-huh. And then Glenn goes into the restaurant and like finagles his way into the surveillance equipment, which was pretty fabulous. <laughs> 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 and so then he's, you know, he's the one to figure out you know, what happened to Dembe because Dembe was in the restaurant. So it shows all that on the video. And Dembe is getting a beating. I mean, I, it was kind of painful. I mean, it was seriously painful to watch that. You oh, know, yeah. even though, I mean, I don't know. It was very difficult because I don't like anything happening to Dembe. He's got like a huge following and everybody's, you know, freaking out about him being captured. And they're like, what's going to happen? I mean, Dembe's usually the one to save Reddington. So who's going to save Dembe? Right. Dembe's going to save Dembe. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> That's it. You know, and, you know, but he's he's working for Red. And, you know, he's he's just going to take that kind of abuse now and then. He's that he's that front line. And I think they've really, you know, you want to get to Red. You've got to kind of go through. You've got to go through Dembe. And, you know, this guy's just, he's bad. He's, he's bad news. He's, he went. Even just to get him in custody, uh, you know, he went over, you know, after his daughter and his his grandchild, I guess. and so he'll stop at nothing. But let's go back to Verdiant. So, you know, they uh, Red and Liz kind of figure out what's going on, and you know that somebody has the code, and and they're going to do maybe a little something 
ex, you know, little extra with it. They find the egg, the uh, empty lab, and then they're trying to download the files. But Wrestler and Samar kind of, I think, because of wouldn't it, all these little side calls that Liz has been making to Wrestler. I, I think that's yeah. kind of what tipped them off, and they kind of they they find the apartment, they find the uh, the inside man, and so they've kind of got a bead on this Verdian. And yes, Liz's connection with Wrestler, where she's calling him all the time, you know, because he's like getting too close, and so she's trying to get him to back off. She, he's still really adamant about that. He doesn't really listen to her. No, he's well, you know, he's got his own set of values, and he's you know, I don't know what it is, but. He has just decided that justice is justice and nobody can really get in the way, which is kind of funny because you know, for a guy that was doing drugs on the job, <laughs> it's, right. a, it's, it's kind of a double standard. But, you know, I think it's kind of what propels the whole chase. You know, it, it's a chase scene is what it is. Right. So, right. you know, they have to get out of there. They I think they get the file, oh, the files partially downloaded. Uh, so they go to a little, uh, it was a little restaurant or bar or something. And there's like an off duty cop that kind of sees what they are. And at first I thought it was just some random, like random guy with a concealed carry, you know, weapon or something. And, uh, you know, and this guy is like, you know, I've, you know, got you dead to rights kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like a little Western action there. It was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, it was interesting how Liz is really on, like, Reddington's not really paying attention so much, but Liz is always on guard. And so she's the one that notices him first. And she's like, why well, you meet me out front or whatever? And then she takes off the back, you know, and then she comes up behind the guy when he pulls his weapon on Reddington. And I thought that was, you know, I like this. I like this Liz. I like that she's, you know, on her game. She's, um, thinking ahead and she's also very, I mean, in that instance, she was, you know, right on task. She was protecting Reddington. So as soon as he, you know, drew on her, you know, when she shot him, you know, she's like, he's like, well, you know, check his pockets and all this stuff. And she's like, he's hurt. <laughs> you know, then she like switches, she switches mindset. She's like, I need to save this guy. I just shot. And they find out he's a, he's an officer, right? He's a, he's a detective. Right. Yeah, you know, they start going through his wallet. I'm thinking, you're the guy, you're the you're the lady that just shot him. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, whipped around. And yeah, course- she's like, and Reddington's like, come on, we got to go. And she's like, no, we got to take him to the hospital. He's going to bleed out before the ambulance gets here. And so Reddington, you know, complies with her. They put him in the car and they drive him right into right to the hospital. Yeah. You know, and Liz, like Liz getting out of the car and looking at her hands and seeing all the blood. That really got to her. That was really devastating for her because now she's crossed she's crossed another line that she thought she would never cross. And so Reddington has a hard time getting her back in the car. And, you know, and they talk about this later. They talk about, you know, she asked Reddington. She's like, how, you know, how can you, how can people, how can you stand for people to look at you like that? You know? Yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, she keeps going into shock and kind of, crossing these lines she shot the attorney general of the united states point blank i mean you know she's already crossed that line and you know this guy had a weapon on her and it's just kind of funny that she's still kind of going into all this yeah i guess it kind of shows that she's still she's still on the right side of the law but yeah she's she really has crossed this line actually a number of times now in fact you know a previous episode when she goes into that restaurant and they do the whole underground thing and uh you know and uh you know she's you know she's looking around and she realizes that everybody in the restaurant is just deathly afraid of her yeah because (laughs) she's done a complete smackdown on this guy and didn't she shoot him too or was that red no she oh i think red no she did she did she did yeah so so so, like you know, she's always like, she's always asking Red, you know, am I a good person? You know, and he's always having to reassure her. You know, he's always telling her that it's not really about that. You know, you shot him for a reason. Does that make you bad? I don't know. <laughs> 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 but she's she shot numerous people. You know, some of Me? them bad, some of them, you know. Yeah, and, you know, and meanwhile, some, you know, Samar and Wrestler, you know, thwart the two men that are trying to release the virus 
they set up a roadblock <laughs> and you know, they're, I mean, they're just, you know, doing what they do. They're, there wasn't a lot of interaction too much with, I mean, Samar has been so co- closed off this so far this season. I'm interesting to see what they'll do with her character. And, uh, and then, you know, the interesting thing, I'm just going to like switch this real quick, you know, with back to Dembe, because, you know, there was a little, you know, there's someone else in there with him. Oh yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Vargas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like surprise. Pee Wee like, Herman. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, we're going to die in here. <laughs> and Dembe, he's just like rolls his eyes. He's like, no, we're not. <laughs> you may die in here, but I'm getting out. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of funny that, you know, the, you know, they, they need, like, he's the sensitive guy and that Dembe is going to, he's not going to break, but he actually might give up some information to keep Mr. Vargas from you know, getting beat up more. You know, it's <laughs> that kind of, yeah, you might not care about yourself at uh, action, but you know, you're, you may go ahead and, and give it up to save him. And, uh, but it's funny that they, Vargas kind of sets up this whole scenario and, you know, they're actually was able to, you know, do something. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting that Mr. Vargas is even there to begin with, considering, you know, they make a point because he was part, um, Red used to discover that his allies were double crossing, right? Vargas was used for double crossing to find out about double crossing Red. And this may be like kind of tricky because we don't really trust him. Right. So we're like, what's he going to do? <laughs> so. Is this um, Tom starts to show up at the restaurant, the Chinese restaurant in this episode, right? Yeah, this is yeah, because that's where him and Liz used to secretly meet or whatever. Well, it was the they there was a dating. There was a there was a specific telephone there that wouldn't uh, she would call. Yeah, and uh, you know, so the waitress. You know, um, there's a couple sites. Uh, one about uh, Entertainment Weekly talks about. The, the constant puppy dog eyes and they, they kind of thought it kind of brought everything to a screeching halt. But I thought it really kind of gave you that sense of, you know, uh, Tom's still in the game. Tom's he's just sitting there waiting. And even this, she's not a bad looking waitress and she starts to feel sorry for him, even gives, uh, uh her number. <laughs> you know, there's this, you know, there's this, uh, relationship going on. <laughs> this nod to how everybody's like, Wants Tom Keen. <laughs> so, I think he's kind of hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so this is when Cooper, Director Cooper, comes in and sits across from him and says, you know, that, you know, you wanted to help Liz. And Cooper tells Tom, I don't trust you. You're a liar, a thief, and a murderer, which is exactly why you were perfect for the job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so he you- wants him to find Kara Kurt. Right. Well, you know, wrestler's not going to use him. Wrestler doesn't trust him. Of course, you know, he's got his own. Wrestler has you know, numerous issues. And uh, uh, poor uh, Liz is having existential moments every time she shoots somebody. So <laughs> I, I, it's, it's kind of nice to have Tom back in this role for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it's it's, I, it's like, thank you. You know, somebody other than other than Red that is not going to fall apart and, and take some action. <laughs> I know Tom is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody enjoys him so much. They talk about him, you know, on all the social media sites. Tom is is a huge thing they talk about besides Reddington and um Liz, those three. And then there's the people out there that are all for wrestler and Liz getting together, but I'm not really part of that group. Um and <laughs> there's some other stuff going on that seems you know, but I'm not sure about what some stuff going on with Liz. I haven't quite figured out yet. And I'm hoping that in the next few episodes that maybe some of that will come to light. So, yeah, I think they're kind of holding some some little things back. I, I don't think Liz and wrestler are going to be an item as long as as long as this chase is going on. It seems like, a, I don't know, it's like I don't want to say brother and sister relationship, but maybe so. It's a, you know, it's kind of this, you know, like. It's not a romantic. I'm not even sure they're even at that point. I think they're still like partner status. Like, you know, Liz was his partner. You know, partner relationships are kind of like, they're not like married couples, but I mean, they can be 
they're pretty close relationships. You rely on each other to, you know, protect each other. So it, it's close like that, but I don't see it being a romantic. No. I never saw it as that. No, I think they last season they got to a point where she showed up at his apartment. They had some, I think he had a bottle of wine or champagne or something, and they kind of sat together. And I think she gave him a cupcake or something like that. Right, and it was just birthday. right, and it or was, he did for her birthday. <laughs> right, and it was just kind of cute. You know, they kind of left it at you know, let's just be. Yeah, there friends, wasn't any heat of, with it. No, there wasn't any like like I didn't think that there was going to be any any sort of relationship like that. Um, and wrestlers then, I don't know, like I said, everybody at this point, it just seems like everybody's kind of holding back. Like there's something else going on with them and we haven't gotten to that point yet. So, well, I think wrestlers going to be kind of stuck in that mode until this chase is completely over because he's the antagonist. Nobody in the team I mean, nobody in the team except wrestler is into pushing to try and capture Liz. I mean, not anybody. Yeah, no, nobody. I mean, not Cooper, not uh, Aram, Samar, anybody. Yeah, no, no. Even the director, I don't think, you know, the uh, uh, above wrestler is really into it. And so if if you get kind of rid of this relationship between wrestler and Liz right now, I think they're stuck until this is done. And of course, I think once that happens, uh, they're going to, you know, she's going to be exonerated. Of course, Cooper, I think in some way will be exonerated and, you know, they'll probably say, you know, you pushed this too far, you know, we'll, we'll keep you in the team, but you're going to go back. I don't, I don't see that wrestler is going to stay as the director as long as Cooper is still in play. Right. I think they're, they're going to go back, but Again, we're stuck. So then we get to the kind of the realization that uh, the Verdiant is is laundering money for the Cabal and probably talked about it way too early. But at this point, Red has figured it out. And Eli Matchett uh, was probably working for Verdiant all along because if if he had do um, released the uh, the little uh, bugs and gotten rid of 90% of the world's crops, it turns out that Verdiant already had the cure. So, yeah. what you know, after all this devastation, whatever's left is going back through Verdiant, and Verdiant turns out the big hero, and you know, corners pretty much 100% of the market, like the 10% maybe they didn't have. Right, then and, everybody comes aboard then. Right, and of course, then they're the pockets for the cabal. The the cabal gets even stronger because, you know, it's the world. Uh, I, I don't think in the States that we realize what kind of a world market corn really is, you know, for third world countries, that's like, you know, that's gold. That, that's gold. It's, it's their, you know, biggest their main staple. Source. I mean, even, you know, during the, you know, some of the corn wars between, between us and Russia, I mean, they, you know, there were really almost Cold War implications over this. So, you know, and that's, you know, as we're winding down, like you said, you know, Liz is saying, you know, look, I shot a cop and killed the attorney general of the United States. And, um, you know, that's she crossed that she crossed that line. And um, what did he say? Bad things are going to find you now, Lizzie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this life has a mind and momentum of its own. Bad things happen to good. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, anything else? No, I think that's it. Looking forward to the next episode. All right. Well, I guess this... Uh, oh, let's uh, do the... Let's see the Twitter. I'm at Jaywin Grosky. And uh, you are at... At MS Maxi. And, and our, our Twitter handle for the Blacklist Pod is Blacklist Pod. And our Instagram account is the Blacklist Pod. All right. So this was the SMG blacklist podcast brought to you by the southgate media group you can go to the website click on all the great shows and blogs and some of our sponsors and you know we really appreciate any uh, input that you could do Uh, you could find like say uh, go to twitter and tell us what you're thinking so that's about it until next time see you then